the Nisanan word is uba, the only Nisanan word that remains on this landscape. Our entire culture, the Yuba is, is the heart. Everything is provided by this landscape. I know the stories of the Yuba River in its former self. Before the reservoir systems and the dams that we have, it was just incredibly powerful. Communities everywhere have been built and exist around water. Dexter, up. Let's go. I think that's universal probably for humanity. Circle started as a community-based organization trying to fight proposed dams on the South Yuba, uh, which they were successful doing, and it's now a state wild and scenic river. So I oversee a department that does a lot, but generally housed in this sort of idea of science and restoration. A large part of that is working to make sure that our restoration and monitoring efforts move forward as smoothly as can be. Our water quality monitoring program is celebrating its 22nd year and one of the longest running community-based monitoring programs throughout the U.S. Water temperature is a great key, kind of easy to measure indicator for watershed health. And so really knowing how that temperature changes, how it varies sort of annually, and over the last 20 plus years of water quality data is really important. The draw to rivers, it just exists in me. The connection is, is easy and hard to trace. I mean, I grew up running around and playing in the creek behind my house. Circle is, it has been part of the community and really driven by, I would say, the needs of the community uh, since its initial inception 40 years ago. It looks like Edwards Upstream. That's the yeah, curve yeah. of Edwards Upstream. And this one. I can recognize Edwards anywhere. Get Ross with his red beard and. Really working with Circle gave me my first sense of success in getting action on environmental policy. Right here, the red canoe. <laughs> I think I was, you know, 16 or 17. And writing little articles for like the local paper about why it was important to get wild and scenic status. And then we got it. And it was so gratifying. <laughs> My parents are very engaged in the community. My dad is an artist, so he spends a bunch of time thinking about place. He paints landscapes of the river, landscapes of the meadows in this area, etc. I think both of them love nature, being out, and what brought them here was the river, or epic connection time with the river in their 20s. We would always go downstream down here. And then there's also some uh, ponds up here, but there was kind of a bridge troll that yelled at people for, quote, swimming at his pool. But, you know. To me, the river is almost a spiritual place because it has all of these different memories of home and memories of some of the people that I've lost. And so I spent a ton of time at the river with my best friend who died when she was 19, and I can feel her there still. When you spend time outside, it's just calming. Mm -hmm. 
The Yuba is, it's a pretty impressive and a pretty cool watershed. Resilience is really apparent written into the landscape. As we think about the climate and climate change, we sort of know that what's going to happen is we're going to get more extreme on either end of the water hydrograph annually. Trying to figure out how to balance those two extremes is a hard problem. I think there is a lot that we as people can do to right the wrongs and correct some of the mistakes that we have made in the past. But we're learning. And so for me, that's really where I find the kind of inspiration for the work and, and optimism for the future. Um, Irene, do you think, Irene, oh, I guess you're playing with the That's a helpful thing to do. I need two more towels. You keep walking. Yeah, but Reed, can you show them where it is? I feel really lucky that my my kids get to experience it with my mom and vice versa that my mom gets to experience it with my kids. It's amazing watching that relationship. And I feel that there's a lot of anxiety and stress in the world. So it's nice for kids to have that time outdoors and have the free space to create. I think today people come to the Yuba to see its beauty. To us and our tribe, it's a living being with a personality, with wants and wishes and needs, and it's not okay to exploit those things. The first true opinion and feeling I had about Circle was, oh my gosh, there are other people out there who feel for the river like we do. It also was kind of a moment of sadness because at that point in time, the tribe was just totally erased. Oral history is so incredibly valuable to be able to bring to partnerships like this that we have with Circle and to feel that finally that's being reciprocated and that we're being invited to have a place in these conversations of protection because it means everything to the tribe. Five. This is our raft. Like I said, there are many like it. This one's ours. Where we're going to be sitting is on. When I first engaged with Circle, Circle is sort of a scrappy, smaller organization. The mission of Circle has expanded from just the sort of South Yuba to protecting the whole watershed so that we have more climate resiliency as a community. It takes a committed community and recognizing and being okay with the fact that it's not always going to be easy, it's not always going to be successful, and that those are the points in time when you need the community support even more. I think you have much more ability to see your impact when you work on local issues, get a better sense of what your community needs. 
when I think about the future of this watershed is that resiliency that this system and really all natural systems have. Everybody has a connection to this river and it's not always the same, but there's common ground there. There's always common ground. There's always this shared love of the river and desire to, to keep it what we know and love.